So, welcome to the show, Mr. John Do. How are you, John? Very well, thanks, Rob. How are you doing? <laughs> the best, man, the best. And if anything, we have you back on the Big Rab Show. You've been on before as part of our beer tent event not too long ago. How did you find that? Awesome. <laughs> it was good fun, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really good. I mean, yeah, it's just something completely different, but it, it just kind of kept moving on and on and on. Like, as in, like, it, it rolled on really nicely to the next yeah. It was just a snap, it, like a snippet of everything, um, and it flew by. It totally just flew by. It it, yeah, I couldn't believe how quick it went. If I'm honest, you know that we were on air for like two, nearly three hours, I think, and the whole thing passed in a flash. It was great. Yeah. Um, but yes, on the beer tent event, we were chatting to you all about your own playing, your involvement with the conservatoire, and all the rest. And of course, you're playing with Inverarian District, but we didn't really get into the the nitty gritty of it, John. You know, we just kind of skimmed over a lot of stuff. Uh -huh. So we actually got some uh, listener questions that were sent in uh, yeah. for folks who want to ask questions. Well, number one on the list was your announcement that you made on the Beer Tent about your new release that's coming out. Tell us a bit more about that, John. Well, um, I'm basically just trying to get, get more of my music out there, but trying to actually sell it a bit more. Yeah. And um, it's... It's a five-track EP. A lot of up and, or like a lot of artists start out. It's pretty common to start with an EP. You use that to try and generate a bit of income to try and release an album. Yeah. Um, Connor Sinclair's band Nos did that. Um, they did a couple of singles, EP, and, uh, and then they've done one album. They're working on the other album. That kind of thing. So I'm just trying to get the ball rolling that way to try and launch this, like launch my uh, playing career. Mm -hmm. And um, so that and uh, that um, five-track EP, uh, it's three tracks of pipes, three tracks of whistles. But um, for me personally, um, I'm absolutely obsessed with uh, harmony and counterpoint. It's something I've studied a lot at school is um, mm. counterpoint, figure, figure bass, factor owls. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with it to the same point that most pipe majors are obsessed with sound. I'll see. Oh, that's bad then. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've got, I just, yeah, I just, I think about it a lot. Anyway, so, um, Three out of the five tracks are multi-tracked instruments. Um, so two, two multi-track whistle tracks and a multi-track pipe track. And it, it kind of just looks at a bit more about uh, polyphonic textures as well as, um, you know, pipe band influence textures, but um, just kind of <clears throat> all sorts. And it, it kind of, a lot of, it, a lot of what I learned, but I think everything I did on that, um, there was nothing I learned or did on that album that I didn't learn at the conservatoire. Right, the there you go. Yeah, yeah. So I take it that from your time at the conservatoire, well, you're still there now, actually. Um, you're Just, drawing a lot from that and bringing it to your own plan. Am I right in saying that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, it's, it's an, ama an absolutely amazing place to be. There's all, like, literally any kind of music or performing arts that's there. And you get to see, I mean, the, the, like the, there's concerts, like loads of concerts every week, and they're of the next generation of musicians. So they're going to be pretty good. A lot of these guys, they work really hard. So like, and then as a student, you get the ticket for free. So you're, you're kind of an idiot for not going to some of these things. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and it's, it's not just folk music, it's like that I went to, like, um, there's a lot of classical. My girlfriend's a classical violinist. Um, so she, she tells me which pieces to go and listen to, which is great. Um, a fantastic brass section. Um, uh, there's just so much, but there's also just so many uh, teachers there. Like the tutors there are all people that are currently in the scene. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And what, one guy that kind of springs to mind is a guy called Greg Lawson, who is a fiddle player. Um, he yeah he writes and arranges he used to be in all the all of the orchestras then he <clears throat> like is now having a career as a freelance musician and um some of the stuff he can teach he's taught us on the course out with the course things like that it's just like mind-blowing and then there's also hamish napier who uh is again really good at teaching in harmony he's, he's just uh, oh, the list just goes on honestly and um you, you just learn something something new every day and, and even you've got your specialists as well like William McCallum and Finn McDonald that are like getting your playing technique and stuff superb but then you go you leave the piping centre you go across the road 
and you listen to a concert of something that you just would never have thought of listening to before. And um, yeah, it's just incredible, like the, the stuff that's available. Um, so yeah, if anything, we were chatting to Danny, uh, Danny from Shots, of course, and he was telling us all about the conservatoire and just how much it meant to him. If anything, the message I'm getting from students who go to the conservatoire is just, it's not all piping. Like, no. it's everything else. And then you bring that to your piping. Would that be right? Yeah, I, I would say, yeah, absolutely. But on the flip side, if you wanted to go there and do nothing but pee break, <laughs> honestly, like, there's scope for everything. I mean, like, if you look at what Danny, like, what Danny was talking about, like, he did a lot of piping, he did a lot of focus stuff. He did, he did everything. Yeah, uh, we all do. Um, and then you get someone like Kieran, uh, who did a lot of teaching, or spit like did did a lot of that, but mm-hmm. did everything else as well. So we all do it all, and then specialize in, or not specialize, but we all like have our separate interests. Yeah, your own focus, really. Yeah, yeah essentially. But um, it's it's so important to do as much as we can. And I remember all three of us did um, played in. Uh, an orchestral suite in first year and actually the three of us did um like we had a trio set on on stage because we were it was basically the alan mcdonald's brothers fan fanfare if you like pipe fanfare mm-hmm. um that we we did we did our own version of it which yeah and um yeah like i don't think a year in we would have thought we'd have the opportunity to play with an orchestra in the, in the concert hall. So the, all the opportunities are there and all the teachers will give you all, all the information you need. Um, yeah, yeah. It's an incredible place. That sounds fantastic. But John, can I ask you then about your own playing? Then how did you get your start? What was the inspiration for you to lift the instrument in the first place? Well, um, Is that I mean, a difficult question? Really, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, um, I just, I've just always liked pipe bands. I mean, not, mm. not in like any serious way, just, you know, uh, I just remember being in the house and every now and again there would be a parade or there'd be games day and uh, I'm from Creef and uh, they always do a really good games day in Creef. Yeah. Um, and I think just from an early age, you know, my parents liked the sound of, of pipe bands, so they would go and listen and we would listen and I re- I just always really liked it, and then um, I was really lucky to go to a school that had good music tuition, and um, I tried a couple of instruments, and then one day I was like, should I, should I try the pipes? And um, mum signed me up for lessons, and uh, I think I could honestly say from day one, I've enjoyed it. I've not really looked back, and now now I couldn't think of my life without piping at all. There you go. Um, yeah. And the teaching teaching there it was Anne Spaulding that taught taught me initially, and mm-hmm. uh, she was an outstanding teacher. Like I don't like, I don't know how. Yeah, she's really really good teacher. Really, but like pretty hard teacher. I mean, <laughs> it was pretty hard to impress. Um, not easily pleased, but she, she like she, like sorry I can't swear, but a like, really good teacher. I mean, like there yeah. were a lot of kids that she got onto Peebra when all they wanted to do was either play rugby or, <laughs> or do all these sports, but yeah. managed to get them as far as Peebra and like, you know, it, it just goes to show, you know, we, we went to a junior competition, it was the Vale of Apple competition, and uh, I was just chatting away to her, and she would just look down the list and she'd go, taught him, taught him, taught him, taught him, and they were all <laughs> under 18 Peebra players. And I was just like, wow. And yeah, I think the, the, the thing that she taught really well was uh, she made the technique really simple and she mm-hmm. taught you good technique and make sure made sure it was all open and everything and like you know when you get that foundation right everything else becomes a lot easier so she got that right without all of her pupils um, there you go if yeah. anything it's, it's a name that we hear quite often on the show is Anne Anne Spalding yeah. I think another podcast actually the up to the line pipe on podcast may have had an interview with her all right. all, all about her approach to tuition and all yeah. of that. So, yeah, but that's an incredible start for you, John. Yeah. So, how how did you get then from bare bone basic beginner then to playing with current world champions then with Inverary? How did that happen? Uh, well, we went, we started going to the, found out what the World Pipe Band Championships was. Um, the first time I went was 2008, which about 
you know, six months later, I learned how special that world was. Yeah. Because of the SFU medley. Um, and then we went back a couple of years later and we watched it and I kind of progressed and I was listening to a couple other, like, kind of talkie pipers. I was found, found pipers online, like, on YouTube and stuff. I just yeah. been away, really interested in it. And then I went back to Wilds and we watched the grade one and I just sat in there going, I just want to just want to play there <laughs> so and then i think um a year later i went to secondary school and it was jenny hutchin that was teaching at the time and i just kind of went all pipe band geek on her and we just like asked her like like all these questions did you go to the world yes i was judging at it oh right okay <laughs> i don't know what we're dealing with um and yeah she just kind of uh it was a it was a school band that uh had it well i, I don't know how best it, it, it had like a separate ring of competitions outside the RSPBA. So we were mm -hmm. learning from MSR and a medley. And yeah. the fact that I was doing that, just kind of, I don't know, I, like, I was just so ready to start playing that kind of pipe band repertoire. And then mm -hmm. she retired and then a guy called Tammy Drummond started teaching at the school. And uh, he just progressed, progressed me even further. In four years or something, he just took me further and further and further. And he, he just taught me everything or like, yeah, in four years of tuition and every single lesson there was something new to be learned whether that was pipe bands or mm. like he introduced me to people like Dive and Fred Morrison and Death Shepherd and old pipe band albums as well and I just listened I, I think I just listened to a lot and then yeah, just yeah. to play a lot and then bought loads of books and like R.S. McDonald's book and Ryan Canning's book and these kinds of things and he, he basically got the standard that was starting to get prizes in junior contests. And then I uh, went to the Inverary junior contest and Do You Campbell was judging Hornpipe and Jig. And um, and then a couple couple of days after the contest, um, he got in touch with Cameron Drummond and arranged an audition. So I think it was just a case of just in starting to enjoy the playing and being taught how, like, wasn't just being taught how to get my Dublin's better, but it was how to practice well for competition. It yeah. was listening to <clears throat> to Gordon Duncan a lot and R.S. McDonald and more pipe bands and just like, I was just really enthusiastic about it and I was just so lucky to have a teacher that was able to like give me all this information or, and, and like look at all these resources and stuff and um, just tell me a lot more. So if anything, you had a huge, well, if anything, a great foundation before you even thought about going near such a, a top flight band, really. So by the time you got your audition and everything, you were already playing incredibly well because of all of your foundation work you've had before that. Yeah, the duration was great. And also, um, I was playing in a really good grade three band, uh, the Vale of Apple grade three. So it was nice to think that if I was playing in that band, then maybe I'd get a step up to up to grade one and I, I honestly didn't know um, how long it would how long it takes for someone to get to you know top six or top three standards mm. of playing so I was kind of in the short run or the short the first kind of goal before thinking about getting winning the world was just to get in the park or to get to get in that arena that was my aim just to get in there to start yeah. with, yeah, yeah. So that was so when I when I found out that the Veil were looking for pipers and so I, I joined them and I thought right, well if I stick with these guys for a couple of years, I'll maybe get in that Grade One band and then then I'll be playing in the arena and then then I was thinking well how can I progress? But then luckily um, I got the audition for Inverary and uh, yeah, just that was my focus for a while was just trying to get was making sure I got that audition right um, mm -hmm. and that. Vale Grade 3 band, shout out to any of them that are listening to that. Oh, it's just it's just amazing. That was an amazing two seasons with them. Um, yeah. Just a great, great bunch of people. It's awesome. Really oh, darn indeed. Yep. Shout out to them. You. Definitely. So, John, then, as well as competitive playing and your involvement with Inverary, Lifting World Championships and all of that, I want to talk to you about composition and your actual creative if you know what I mean. Your creative music and having this new release of this EP and everything but that's not all that you're creating um, do you want to tell us what else that you've been composing at this last while uh, yeah so um, 
with the lockdown, I've just decided, well, other than getting my degree, <laughs> uh, I've tried to, I've just been trying to write a lot. And I did, I actually did A-level music at school. And when I did GCSE, I just wrote loads of back- backpipe music for composition. And they were like, yeah, yeah, that's good. And I got a good grade and whatnot. I got to A-level and I was like, yeah, I'm planning on just doing that again. And they were like, no. <laughs> you can't do that. So you had to you had to write in a in a particular style, which the kind of quickest and fastest route would have been writing in a classical style, if you like. So okay. I did. A, yeah. I, I wrote I wrote a piece of music that was all all classical, all classical influences, mm-hmm. and um, it was it was about uh, it basically had to tell a story, and this, the theme for that year was a river. So you had to kind of like depict notions of a river through music. Which I found wow. really challenging at the time, but it was great, yeah. it was really good fun. And then we had a concert where it was all done in Sibelius, and we had a concert where we had to, where those pieces were shown just on Sibelius, like, I don't know, on, on a projector with some uh, speakers. And it was, it was a really good concert, but my teacher mm-hmm. said, why don't you try and find, excuse me, images of rivers to kind of help narrate the story? So, yeah. um, so I did that, and that was like, so much fun. I spent like three or four hours just trying to put that kind of slideshow together and kind mm. of explaining this is this depicts this, this depicts this, whatever. And um, I remember my teacher hammering me saying like, this module is so hard, you can't get like, it's like nearly impossible to do well, you'll all be lucky if you pass. And I actually <laughs> got the results two days before the Worlds. And he was like, yes, yeah, you it is physically impossible to get 100%. <laughs> and I was like, great, okay. But before that all happened, that's when I kind of started getting interested in film music. I started listening a lot to John Williams, Bernstein, uh, Hans Zimmer, Howard Shore, um, Carter Burrell, uh, all these kind of big names and just listen to the kind of music they were doing. Then I got the result through and unfortunately for my teacher, I got 100%. So that wow. totally, that, totally <laughs> like, that rocketed me to think, that totally boosted my confidence. And I was like, I can totally go down this avenue. Of and course, yeah. So I kind of, um, I applied for the ICS, obviously, but in that kind of time, you know, that kind of winter post Worlds 2015, I was really thinking about how I can become a, com- like a composer full time. And uh, so that, and then I kind of like just wanted to get into writing uh, film music, but combining that with the Scottish element. Wow. So what you're yeah. Scottish and about the classical music and trying to fuse them in whatever whatever kind of means. But yeah. the main thing I really wanted to aim for was uh, writing film music. And in second year at uni, I was like, just the right place at the right time. There was a, um, a graduate short film being made um, as part of their degree. And it was based in Scotland and uh, they were looking for a composer to write like, thir- like 90 seconds. So I, I saw it and I wrote the 90 seconds and I watched the rest of the film and I was kind of like, music's okay, but <laughs> I mean, if I'm going to be really critical, I think it could be better. So I wrote the thing that I sent you. Yeah. I sent it to them and they said, that's, that's amazing. Would you like to do the whole film? And I said, yes, absolutely. And like, it was a match made in heaven because it was totally the, the kind of niche of music that I wanted to write for. Wow, fantastic. So what I've been working on a lot now is, in the last couple of years, is just looking at ways to write, to kind of fuse uh, classical idioms with folk music. Um, And it's it's nothing that's, it's not, it's not brand new. It's been done, it's been done, but um, I'd like to see it being done more, if that makes sense. There you um, go. So I think if anything, um, for the folks listening right now, John, you've actually sent us a clip there that you were chatting about. So I think at this point, we should really just have a listen to it. Yeah, cool.
There you have it there. So that was absolutely amazing. I have to say, I've been listening to that on a bit of a loop since you sent me that, John. (laughs) (laughs) It's fantastic because you could just kind of shut your eyes and it takes you on a, you know, it takes you to a different place. I don't know. Do you want to tell us about that track, what we just listened to there? So, yeah, I don't think I could have written that track if it wasn't for going to the RCS because, and like, like I say, you don't just learn about um, orchestration or, um, or like your own studying and stuff or, like, I don't know, um, bit more about harmony and getting to know the players. You, well, firstly, you, you meet people that are interested in it in the same things as you. So luckily I was able to get um, a full ensemble to play that live. So that was live. All the musicians are there to wow. do that. Wow, that's amazing. Great. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. And you, you end up networking, but also because you're because you're surrounded by people in the same uh, kind of field and, uh, and are interested in the same things, you all kind of talk about the people you're listening to. And uh, that track was inspired by a band called Dreamer's Circus, which are, are a trio from Scandinavia. And um, I mean, if you thought that was good, you should listen to these guys because what I did there, they'll do that, but times 10. They will seriously put you... Wow. I'll have to listen to that now, yeah. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you call them again? Primo's Circus. Right, right, okay, cool. You'll listen to later on, but they're, they're amazing. So, again, if you're, listening, if you're listening to good... If you're listening to good music all the time and you're inspired by it, you kind of aspire to play like that, you know, yeah. uh, or to write like that. So... That particular scene is actually when uh, the little girl. So the film, the short film, is about a girl who is finding a coping mechanism to deal with her father's increasing or de- declining health. Hmm. And uh, at the very end of the film, he dies, and that music was her basically feeling the great loss that she has felt. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think when when I'm going when I'm doing that. You do kind of get that feeling from listening to it. You know, there's this kind of a melancholy kind of thing. But it's amazing, John, you talk about painting pictures with music. And that's exactly what, you know, composing for film and TV and all the rest. That's what that does. But yeah. yourself, as a traditional musician, as a bagpiper, you know, your approach to it, we understand it as piping fans. And that kind of gives us an extra level of, that's kind of cool. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But it's totally possible. I mean, like if you think about it, we're all we're all players, we're all musicians, which means we play the music that these composers have been writing. Yeah, we've got an insight. Mm-hmm. Well, that's it. So the door's already open. So if anything, I challenge folks listening now. If you ever thought you would put pen to paper and write something, go for it. Give it a go. You know. Absolutely, yeah. There's no yeah. better time than there's a lect- one of the lecturers said something like there's there's no better time to write uh, the string quartet that you want to write than right now. There you are. Exactly. Yeah. So, John, if anything, man, thank you again so much for taking time to chat to us here on the show. Uh, it's been great, actually, to hear all about your play and your experiences. And I dare say we will have some blistering releases from you in the near future. I'm dead excited. <laughs> and uh, before before we finish up, um, I've, said, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Um, there's a lot of people out there that really, and myself included, that really appreciate uh, the show and what you do. Ah, oh, so, thanks, man. Well, my <laughs> they used to come to all the majors, but for whatever reason, they, they can't anymore. Well, yeah. none of us can. But um, before that, you know, they, they weren't able to come, and because you you provide the live stream, it's just oh they yes, really, really really appreciate that. They always oh, have brilliant going on. So yeah. Um, yeah, we really appreciate that. Oh, that's great. Thanks a million, John. If anything, that's exactly why we why we done that. Do you know, mm-hmm. for for folks who can't make it. So, oh, that's great to hear. Thank you very much. So, well, if anything, John, before I let you go, I have to ask you some big rab show staples, mate. Before I let you go, yeah, have you got a, a particular favourite cheese? Oh, I tried some nice smoked cheeses recently, but nothing Ooh. nothing beats melted mozzarella. Yep, I have to agree with you. Yep, 100%. <laughs> also, yellow flashes in a pipe band uniform. That Yes or no? Like, I'm talking fluorescent yellow. Like, you could see these things from across the park. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> if, it's, if it's dark, yes. Well, yeah, yeah, they're functional. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. In all seriousness, right? Uh, you know, sometimes 
you, you think sometimes things that shouldn't work do. So maybe True. one day someone's going to make, I, you, you never know, RG Hardy might release a brand new yellow Pythanian form that could be... And be, everyone will start wearing it, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> but for the time being, no. <laughs> That's it, yeah. Hmm, it's questionable. Uh, also, uh, pineapple on a pizza. Yes Definitely or no? Not. Definitely not. Thank you. You're not a savage. Good man. <laughs> I agree with you. And also then, before I let you go, have you, in your history of playing, have you had a most embarrassing moment? Oh, I can think of about 20. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, I'll do, I'll do the one that shames the fewest number of people. So, okay. so we're at North, <laughs> we're, we're at North Berwick, and um, it, North Berwick can be an interesting climate. You yeah, know, it rains one minute, five minutes later. Anyway, mm. it was it was sunny, but it was too sunny. So we all lined up against the bus, and it was windy, and we like we lined up uh, in the shade. Luckily, it wasn't raining, but we lined up in the shade, and. Um, uh, the wind kind of comes, it's kind of a wee bit like a funnel, and the wind came right down, uh, <laughs> right through the van, and my kilt went right up. Oh. <laughs> Not only that, but my best friend's brother was filming the band at the time. And he oh, called. of course there'd be a camera. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, the, the boxers were fluorescent pink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, incredible. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I couldn't believe he, was, he just came up to us and was like, look at that. And I'm like, it's fine. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> and no. of course, now you'll probably see that video a hundred times all over social media. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> they did actually post it. And I was like, you can't. You can't have that. <laughs> Oh, amazing. Uh, John, again, thank you, man, for taking the time to chat to us. And Thanks we, for having me. Yeah, we really wish you every success in your playing future. Yeah. Yeah, we'll hopefully see you on the grass in, you know, 2024. Yeah, indeed I. <laughs> That'll do well, John. Take care, mate. Thank, thank you. Much. Cheers, Rob.